The technique I'm about to explain to you in this video is so useful and satisfying it's not even fair. It's both a mixing technique and a cutter harmony system, so it will not only help you get the right cutter, but also guarantee that it's in harmony with the rest. I call this technique the dual scale mixing technique or double scale palette, whatever you prefer. It's it's a made up name, it doesn't really need to have a name, to be honest, it's pretty basic. The idea is to have two complementary value scales next to each other to pick up paint from the interval in the middle. This is our mixing gamut right here and you can see how it keeps everything tightly together. So this dual scale technique is not something you should use all the time. It's not really worth it. It works really well when you want to play on a warm, cool opposition, but when the warm and cool colors are not meant to be separated, but intertwined and mixed with a lot of subtlety. Personally, I use this technique only when I need to work on you know, a very atmospheric painting where the subject is fully integrated with the colors of the surrounding. Like here in the demonstration for this video, I want to paint an almost surreal scene, like an ocean, almost like an underwater scene, very atmospheric with a very cool cyan blue tone all over. This mixing technique is also very useful when you have a cutter composition with a clear complementary pair. To be clear, it doesn't have to be done with complementary cutters, but it works really well this way. If both scales are complementary, the mixing line will give you gray mixes in the middle, which is pretty useful. In my case, the colors of the scales are not perfectly complementary, but they still allow me to achieve the same effect. If I mix the two, I get less chromatic colors in the middle. The colors don't need to be perfect complementary. If they are just somewhat opposed in the color wheel, they should work similarly and create the same effects. Generally, think of it as a warm, cool color scheme. Just try to get one of the scales on the cool side and the other one on the warm side of the wheel and you're good to go. Real quick, if you like my approach and you feel that you need to learn more about painting, know that I have two courses available. My first course focused on oil painting techniques from beginner to intermediate, and my second course is more advanced and focuses on color theory and its applications for painters. I've had great reviews, I'm very proud of these courses, so if you want to learn oil painting and cutter, I'm sure that they can help you. All right, let's go back to the video now. So you can pick up whatever cutter you want in my cutter wheel. You'll find the link in the description. It's designed so that you can easily pick and choose a scale and see what pigments can allow you to mix it. Choose scales that are somewhat on the opposite side of the wheel, but prioritize the actual cutter of the subject that you want to paint. For example, you can start with the regular cutter of your subject. In my case, that would be the colors of the skin tones with a scale like this, for example. And the other color is the color of this bluish sign underwater atmosphere that I want to create. And that's it, it's pretty simple. Just refer to my cutter wheel if you're not sure about what pigments to use. In my case, for the warm scale, I use titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a very small touch of quinacridone rose. It's more on the dull orange side, so I don't push it very far in the quinacridone range. For the cool scale though, I use white, burnt umber, cobalt teal blue, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue. And you might think, why use different types of blue? Why have two? Why do you need both ultramarine and phthalo? Well, I guess you would only ask this question if you've never used phthalo blue. It's a great color, but it's really overpowering. Basically, the ultramarine blue is like my mixing base. It's pretty neutral. It's the body of the paint and the phthalo really dictates the tone and it's so strong that I only want a small amount. If I used this pigment alone, it would be way too strong, way too acid, and I don't really want that. I want cool, murky water, not blue Gatorade or Curacao. And this double scale mixing technique is also a great way to organize your palette. Arrange your cutters on your palette in a logical and systematic way. I put one on top and one below horizontally, but you can also put them side by side vertically if you prefer, as long as you place the warm cutters on one side and the cool cutters on the other side. 
Within each color scale, you can organize the colors from light to dark, creating a value scale. You can have between three and nine steps, depending on the amount of precision that you need. So let's start. Before you start the actual painting, you want to sketch or visualize the composition you want to create. You have to consider the placement of your focal point, the overall balance of the warm and cool colors and how the values will contribute to the mood and the atmosphere of your painting. In my case, I want to fuse the man with the colors from the ocean. So as you'd go down, the skin tones would become undistinguishable from the colors of the ocean progressively. The top of the body would have like normal skin tones and it would gradually get cooler and cooler until it's the same as the background. Normally, this kind of thing is pretty tricky to do, but in this case, with this double scale, it's really easy. You begin by blocking in the major shapes of your composition and try to use the color of the background, so in my case, the cool color, to paint the underpainting. This way, it will reinforce this atmospheric effect with the same tones glowing from underneath. Once I'm done with the underpainting, I begin with the painting of the man. I start with the warm scale and I progressively merge my colors with additions from the cool scale. Start with the darkest values from your warm and cool scales and use the warm colors for areas that require a sense of warmth, of course, and also prominence when you want to make the colors pop a little bit more. And inversely, use the cool colors for areas that need a more recessive effect that needs to blend more in the background. If you remember my color composition naming system, the warm scale in this case is my tonic and the cool one is my dominant. So when I want to make something pop, I'll then bring back the warm tones. And when I want to get something more evanescent, I add more colors from the cool scale. I build up the painting focusing mainly on the values. I don't really care about warm and cool, about the different types of scales. The warm and cool hue here is not really an issue. If I get it wrong, I can always adjust on the spot. So I don't spend too much time thinking about it. I really focus on value building. The warm and cool thing is so easy to do with this system that I'm not even worrying about it. I'm not even thinking about it. It's just doing its own thing in the background. I just focus on shapes, volume, and form with you know, lights and shadows. And the warm and cool scheme is almost an externality, but it works without me having to really think about it. I continuously assess my composition and make small adjustments as needed. I don't really pay attention to the relationships between warm and cool here because with this system, they can only balance themselves in the end. I use just subtle transitions between warm and cool and soft gradations to create a sense of depth and volume. Obviously, the painting can then have other colors outside of this range of this double scale. And actually, that's what I'm trying to work on afterwards to bring more red accents and extra colors to make things pop a little bit more, just to bring a little bit of variety from this dual complementary scheme. For this video, I just wanted to focus on painting the main subject 
in the atmosphere with this warm cool double scale but it's just one technique among others and it has to be used in combination with other techniques to build a more interesting harmony. If you want to watch a video about cutter harmony, simply click on the link that's going to appear here. A huge thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon. This video wouldn't be possible without your support. If you want to join the community, the link is in the description below. You'll also find the links to both my courses, my oil painting course and my cutter course. All right, that's it for today, my friends. And as always, joy and inspiration to you. Bye.